When it comes to the Derwent and Polychromos pencils, there are lots of similarities but also some differences as well. So I'm going to be putting these pencils to the test today. And if you haven't already, please do make sure that you subscribe to my YouTube channel and turn the notification bell on so that you'll get notified every time I upload a video. I've also got my Patreon page listed down below as well and my Instagram. So if you want to support me further, you can and the links are below. I upload Patreon tutorials every single month as well well as loads of other exclusive rewards for patrons. But let's jump right into this video and the first thing is comparing wax and oil pencils. Now one thing that these pencils have in common is that they are both oil based pencils. So in comparison to wax based pencils, this means that these pencils are going to have a much harder lead than wax pencils. So there's going to be some things that these pencils are better at than others and that is why I want to test out most of the common techniques that you're going to be using your coloured pencils for. And as you can see, in terms of the pencils, they both perform very similarly because they are oil based. So let's jump into the build quality now. So build quality is very important because the better quality the pencils, the more durable that they're going to be. And I can say that in comparison to each other, they both are really good build quality. There's a few things that I wanted to point out. The first being that they both have a wooden casing on the end of them. That is really important because if you accidentally drop these pencils, the lead inside the pencils is going to be protected. They also have a centered lead so the lead is centered in the wood casing which does mean that the lead is not off centered if it's off centered like with prismacolors you can get a lot of problems with breakages so both of these pencils are very well made and manufactured they are very well known for being very good high quality pencils and in terms of the two of them i wouldn't really give an edge over one compared to the other i think that they are both really good professional artist quality pencils so I would say that the quality for both of these pencils is excellent. Okay, so now let's start to put these pencils side by side in some few technique tests. The first being layering. We're going to start with the Polychromos pencils and the first thing that I noticed with Polychromos pencils is that they do layer really well. Despite the fact that they are oil pencils, oil pencils typically have a much harder lead so it can be a little bit difficult to get really nice even coverage with layering. Typically with wax pencils you notice that they are a bit more creamy and smooth. The Poly Chromos is a bit of a harder lead so they're not as easy to create layering effects than it is with wax but I do like the polychromos I think that they lay down very well it's also very easy to layer different colors over the top of each other and mix colors in together as well and that is very important with colored pencils because you want to stretch those colors as far as you can very easy to lay down the colors and I don't really have any difficulty with doing this at all and as you can see, the colour mixing process is very easy. It's very, very easy to lay colours over the top of each other and start to create a new palette of colours. Okay, so then we're moving on to the Derwent and the first noticeable difference that I had with these is that they do feel a little bit more creamy and a bit more buttery compared to the Polychromos. So I did find that it was a little bit easier to lay down these pencils than the Polychromos pencils. I got a really nice, smooth, even buttery coverage with these pencils. It was also very easy to lay colours over the top of them. So in terms of this technique, I would give a slight edge to the Derwent Light pencils but not anything with that is too dramatic of a difference okay so then we're moving on to burnishing burnishing is where you apply so much pressure to the paper that you start to flatten the tooth of the paper and then achieve those final layers so you'd want to be using this technique if you were getting towards the end of a drawing and the one thing that i love about the polychromos pencils is that they are great for this technique the main reason being because they are oil based pencils so therefore they don't produce much of a wax bloom and because of this i do use the burnishing technique 
technique a lot with these pencils. I get a very smooth coverage and even results. So I would say that they are very good for burnishing. I do find that wax is a little bit better though because it is softer so it's much more easy to blend the pencils. So now let's look at the Derwent Lightfast pencils. Again because they are oil based pencils they are good for burnishing and they don't create much wax bloom. I will be talking about wax bloom in a lot more detail later on in the video but I wanted to point that out for burnishing because typically you see this a lot with wax pencils. I did feel that these pencils were a lot more creamy and buttery than the polychromo so in general it was a little bit easier to burnish these pencils but I did find that these pencils were a little bit more blotchy than the polychromos. Again something that you typically see with wax pencils because they have more of a waxy coating. So now we're moving on to blending. So how well do these coloured pencils create really nice even coverage and good blending results? Well, the polychromos I find are very, very great for blending techniques, particularly when you are going through the layering and burnishing techniques. I find it very easy to go in and blend the pencils. I do find that wax, because they are a much softer lead, it is typically easier to blend pencils with dry blending techniques. For example, using a white pencil or a blending pencil to blend the colours together. Whereas the oil pencils such as polychromos do typically blend better with a wet medium such as solvent but both the polychromos and the derwent pencils do blend out relatively well i like how they blend together so it's very easy to mix colors together again i've already talked about that smoothness and the creaminess to the derwent pencils but there's really nothing in it between these pencils they are both very much on par with each other in terms of how well they blend so you can see how well you get that really nice gradient effect between colours with both the pencils. This is the Derwent set that I'm doing now and you can see how lovely the transition is between colours and how well they blend in together. Okay, so now let's look at a solvent. So as I just literally said, typically oil pencils work best when they're being blended with solvent or wet mediums and wax pencils work best being blended with dry techniques. I am using a cotton bud as well for blending and all that I have done is just dab this cotton bud into a little bit of solvent and I'm just going along and blending out these pencils. And as you can see, this is a really effective technique to use with blending these pencils they blend really well very smoothly and you get really good results so I think that both the polychromos and the Derwent works really well with this technique because they are oil pencils I did find that I got a little bit more of a smoother result with the polychromos pencils but I do feel that is down to the fact that the lead is a lot harder whereas the Derwent pencils has softer lead so I didn't find that they blended as well with the solvent but again, it's not really a dramatic difference between the two of them. They both still work well in use with a solvent. So what about details? The Polychromos pencils are really well known for being one of the best pencils to create a lot of detail with because they are oil based pencils and because oil based pencils have a much harder lead they can retain their sharp point for longer and create much more defined details and I use the polychromos all the time for creating detailed work for example animals the same with the Derwent pencils I don't really think there's much in between them these pencils are also great at creating really crisp details and the lines in both the pencils stay really sharp and crisp rather than with wax you get a lot of thick and fuzzy lines so they are both excellent pencils for using to create that great level of detail with Creating highlights is one of the most important factors of a drawing because highlights can create that contrast and really make a drawing pop. So I'm going to be testing both of the white pencils to see which one I think is the best for creating highlights. Unfortunately, as you can probably imagine, Polychromos is very well known for not having a very good white pencil. The white pencil is very translucent. It is really hard to create any sort of white highlight with and I definitely don't like this pencil for creating 
creating highlights. I think that it is very translucent, it's very difficult to really get that coverage over any areas and I just find that it is pretty useless. Thankfully the Derwent white pencil I think is definitely a step up from the Polychromos pencil, it's a lot more opaque so therefore the white highlight shows through a lot more. You can see the difference there between the two. The white Derwent pencil is definitely a lot better for creating stronger highlights and really getting that coverage. So now let's look at shadows. Now again the Polychromos pencil is well known for its black pencil but in comparison to the white pencil this pencil is excellent and a lot of people will recommend this pencil. It is still one of my favourites for creating really intense shadows with. The black is so black it's really intense and it provides that really strong coverage so if you're wanting to create very intense shadows in your drawing this is definitely a pencil to consider investing in. I think that it is excellent for getting in that really rich intense black into your drawings. Then the Derwent black pencil is also really good for creating intense shadows but I would say that there is a clear difference between the two. The Polychromos pencil is a lot more intense whereas this black pencil does have some brownie hues to it and more of like a warmer undertone to it rather than it being very very intense. So out out of the two I would say that I do prefer the Polychromos black pencil and I will be sticking to that for my shadows and really dark areas of a drawing. So now let's have a look and see how these pencils fare with textures, so creating textures in your drawing. I'm going to start with the Polychromos pencil and I'm just going to test these pencils using an X-Acto knife or a craft knife. Typically a lot of people will create textures using an X-Acto knife and that's exactly what I am doing here. And the Polychromos pencils works really well with this technique, it's very easy to just scratch away some layers of coloured pencil. I find that wax pencils don't work as well with this technique and you can get like a lot more muddied results whereas with this with the polychromos pencil and oil pencils in general it's much easier to go in and just lift off and scratch away those colored pencil layers Now with the Derwent again I'm just creating a swatch there and I'm going to just go in with the X-Acto knife and scratch away some of that pencil and again I would say that this is just equally as good as the Polychromos pencil. It's very easy to go in with the X-Acto knife and just scratch away the layers of coloured pencil so this would be great technique to use if you're wanting to try and lift up some of the pencils and reveal some lighter tones underneath. Both pencils are on par with each other in terms of this technique. Technique, I wouldn't give an edge to any one of the pencils. Wax Bloom is something that I mentioned earlier on in the video but I just wanted to talk about this quickly. Um, wax Bloom is typically where you will see when you hold up a drawing to the light you will see a glare from the coloured pencils and because both the Polychromos and the Derwent pencils are oil based they typically don't produce as much Wax Bloom as wax based pencils. So with the Polychromos you can get really good results and you don't typically see a lot of Wax Bloom, you're only really seeing it if you hold up your drawing in very harsh lighting like what I'm doing in this video but in natural light it's not very obvious to see wax bloom whereas with wax based pencils such as Prismacolors the wax bloom is very very evident so in certain lights it will produce a real glare from the coloured pencils and if you spent a lot of time on your drawings it can be quite disappointing to see a wax bloom from the coloured pencils so in terms of the polychromos and the Derwent pencils, both of them don't produce a lot of wax bloom, there's not really much in between the pencils either and I would say that they are much better than wax based pencils for the shine. So 
So what about smudging? Again, something that I can't stand with coloured pencils is that when you spend ages working on a drawing, you can get a lot of smudging. Now the polychromos pencils, because they are oil based, I don't find that they smudge as much as the as wax based pencils such as Prisma Colours or the Caran d'Ache Luminance. I'm just using my finger there just to see how much or how little it smudges and it doesn't actually smudge a lot. There's definitely more evidence of smudging in wax based coloured pencils. But I would still recommend that if you are creating drawings for a client that you definitely use a fixative spray to fix your drawings. Again with the Derwent pencils there's really not much of a difference. I would say the smudging levels are about the same and they are definitely not smudging as much as wax based Based coloured pencils such as the Prismas and Caran d'Ache Luminance. What about light fast rating? So light fast rating is a pencil's resistance to fading or discolouring in natural light. So the higher the light fast rating, the better the pencil is. And you can find the light fast rating on each individual pencil, but also there are light fast charts online. This is the Polychromos and they follow the blue wall scale. The blue wall scale goes as followed, a 3, 2 and 1. So in LF3, the pencil is going to resist against fading for 100 plus years. LF2 is 25 plus years and LF1 is 5 plus years. Of these, 102 pencils are in LF3, 16 pencils are in LF2 and only 2 pencils out of the 120 are in LF1. This means that if you've got pencils with an LF3, then they are going to be resistant against fading for 100 or more years. The Derwent follows the ASTM 6901 scale and all of their pencils are an LF1 or LF2. An LF1 means that the pencil will not fade or discolour for 100 plus years and an LF2 is 50 plus years. Of these, 62 pencils are an LF1 and 38 are an LF2. This is one of the highest light fast ratings for any coloured pencils, which is why they are known as the Derwent light fast pencils. So this means that all of these pencils are going to be really light fast and they won't fade or discolour in natural light for many, many years to come. In comparison to the Caran d'Ache Luminance, these pencils are also way up there and one of the top coloured pencil brands for light fast rating. So let's take a look at the cost and sets and how this is reflective of both the coloured pencil brands. Let's start with the Polychromos pencils. You can buy these pencils open stock, so as individuals, a set of 12 or a set of 120. If any of that information is incorrect, please do let me know in the comment section below as well. So what this means is that a set of 120 pencils will cost on average $220. This can be slightly more or slightly less. When we take a look at individual pencils, if you're going to buy open stock, it will cost you around $3.50, but for the set of 120, it's $1.83. So it is cheaper the more that you buy per individual pencil. You can buy the Derwent pencils open stock as a set of 12 all the way up to a set of 100. And for the actual price of them, I think that it is extortionate, even in comparison to the Caran d'Ache Luminance, which technically have a higher percentage of more light fast pencils. I think that the Derwent is really overpriced. So for a set of 100 pencils, it's gonna set you back around $566, which I do not think is worth it. I think that is really expensive. For open stock pencils it's going to cost around $6.17 and for a set of 100 it's going to cost $5.66. I think that that is ridiculous and in comparison to the polychromos, the polychromos are much better value for money. So what do I think overall? I think that both the pencils have a lot of similarities. There are some differences that I would note. The biggest thing I think that puts me off of the Derwent pencils is the price and I think that alone really puts these out of the market for me and I would actually choose the polychromos over the Derwent Lightfast pencils for that reason and that is a shame because the Derwent Lightfast pencils are a really high quality pencil, they have one of the best Lightfast ratings but the price is what really turns the tables for me. But I would be really interested to know which one is your favourite, which one do you prefer? 
please do let me know in the comments section down below and as always I really hope that you enjoyed this video. Keep creating guys and I'll see you soon. Bye!